En 2001, je publiais mon premier livre « Balisong » sur le couteau papillon. A l'époque, l'auteur le plus connu aux états unis sur ce sujet était Jeff Imada. Jeff Imada est cascadeur, il est aussi instructeur de Jeet Kune Do à l'Innocento Academy. L'Innocento Academy qui est derrière nous. Alors allons rencontrer Jeff et on va un peu discuter avec lui de ce qu'il pense du Balisong comme accessoire de self-défense. Hi, my name is Jeff Imada. I was born in Los Angeles, California, and I've been uh, in California growing up my whole life, and uh, got involved in martial arts when I was about 14, 13, 14, and, uh, and then fooled around with some friends, doing different things, different martial arts, um, and then formally started taking classes, uh, took Taekwondo and, and Japanese Kempo, and then met uh, Mr. Inasano uh, to learn, to be fortunate enough to learn and be authorized to teach Jeet Kune Do and Filipino martial arts. I got involved in stunts while I was going to college. I was a, a pre-med student and I sort of got a little bit hooked into uh, the movie business. I was doing background work and then I, um, instead of applying to med school, I graduated with a degree and uh, decided to pursue the uh, movie industry for a while and thought maybe I could get back into it, get, I'd do it for a couple of years and go back and maybe apply to med school or something, which never happened. Um, some of the best memories I've had over the years, I've been doing it for, what is it, 30, 37 years, I think. Um, is that right? Something like that. Yeah, 37, 30, yeah, about 37 years. and. Uh, Some of my best memories in the industry is uh, working for John Carpenter um, uh, and been fortunate enough to stunt coordinate for all his projects since Big Tron Little China, which is a lot of fun and a cult classic. And uh, worked with Curtis Hansen, which he did, I did LA Confidential, Eight Mile, and a couple other movies with him. And also um, over the years, just been really fortunate to be involved in the stunt industry, doing high falls, fire burns, car work, um, exp you know, doing air rams, ratchets, and then get, being also involved in doing fights and fight choreography uh, over the years. So it's been a lot of fun. And then uh, the other highlights on the fight side would be maybe working, well, would be working on the Bourne, Bourne movies, a couple of the Bourne films with Matt Damon, um, and having them give me the freedom to create some of the fights there and well the way I choreograph fights it depends upon the script but uh, particularly in the Bourne, Bourne films it's supposed to be a very realistic situation and he's supposed to be trained to to take care of the opponent very efficiently and very quickly so I generally put myself in that position as that person and also do the research with the, you know, talk to the actor about his character and the director about what he feels the, the character is to, to get other input and see if we're all on the same page. And then I'll generally go through the script, see what's, what's involved going into, going into a room from point A to point B or being outside and trying to get from point A to point B. And I'll generally, uh, from there I'll, I'll, uh, figure out how many opponents there are, what the situation is, if he's running or walking, uh, and then sort of just create that scenario and try and figure out how I would, how I would uh, take care of the opponents. And uh, if I'm trying to get from point A to point B, then trying to get through them as quickly as possible so that I'm not delayed. And so I generally just do that and make it, try and make it as realistic as possible as if I was in that real situation myself. The Bali Song books and videos that first came about because uh, Les Deasis, who was the, uh, the owner of, uh, at the time, Bali Song and Pacific Cutlery and Benchmade and, and uh, you know, it's, the names have changed over the years. But um, he at the time approached me saying that he was Fil of Filipino descent and he's always been interested in making a quality butterfly knife, Bali Song. But he was embarrassed to say that he didn't know how to use, how to manipulate the, the Bali Song and also wanted somebody to advise him on, you know, how, how it felt and how it looked and everything else. So he, uh, we, we uh, conversed and, and we worked together on, in developing 
you know, some of the finest quality butterfly knives. Um, the, it was different than the ones you'd find from the Philippines because they were lighter. Um, the manipulation was a little bit different because uh, Les's knives were milled from solid steel handles. So the weight of the handle was much different. So you had to learn how to manipulate it a little bit differently um, because of the weight factor. But uh, as far as the quality of the blade, you couldn't find a better quality Bali song anywhere. And from there, um, I went on shows, on road shows with him to uh, display his knives and show his knives off. And people were wondering how, what the two handles were for. So I'd, ha I'd demonstrate at the knife shows or gun shows how the knife would be manipulated, and which actually, it was funny because people were talking about it at the time when they were at the gun shows or knife shows, they'd be hearing this clicking noise. And so then they would always wonder what all this noise, what this noise was, and it would start attracting people within the show. And, and before you know it, we'd have a big crowd of people around the, the booth because they're very fascinated with this knife that most people had not seen before. Yes, after a few years of less selling the knives, the Bali songs, and quite successfully, um, and him, we were talking, and I'm, I was getting it on movies and TV shows to get more publicity. Uh, there wasn't too much of an issue at the time about the laws, uh, and uh, generally, if you got pulled over by a police officer, they generally would let you go because in California because it was, they knew it was at least a $250 knife, and so they figured nobody of you know any no gang guys or anybody like that street hoods or anybody would generally spend $250 for a quality knife like that. So generally, unless you're very suspicious, they would generally let you go. And also, it was not really a switchblade because it would. You had to manipulate it. It wasn't a button that opened it up. So, uh, so it was okay for a while. And then, unfortunately, when we, they started importing all the cheaper butterfly knives that were like twenty dollars, thirty dollars, forty dollars, and then a lot of the um, kids off the street would get a hold of them and things like that. So, it eventually became illegal and a felony to carry a, a bali song. Uh, on your body or in the car or anything like that. And in California, you can carry a gun. And I mean, you, you, if you caught it, carried a gun and you got caught, it was a misdemeanor. But if you had a butterfly knife or molly song, it was considered a felony, which didn't make too much sense. But so, uh, so we sort of, I guess, managed to have the Bali songs um, banned in California because it got so popular and, and because of the influx of a lot of cheaper Bali songs that came on the market. So it's pretty unfortunate. I think the Bali song is actually a great accessory for self-defense. Um, uh, you can use it closed as a closed weapon. So you can use it like a Japanese Iwata stick and stuff, or you can f use it as a flail so you can spin one handle out. If you don't want to cut somebody, you can fling it and hit somebody and try and discourage them from, from continuing whatever aggressive action they're doing. And as a final resort, you can flip it around. And, and if people aren't familiar with it, they may be surprised for a second or two, which will give you the advantage of, uh, of, of the situation. And then as a final resort, I mean, you, it's obviously a, a good knife. but. But um, if you want to take it in degrees of uh, offensive, offensive or defensive uh, tactics, then um, I think it's a really great weapon. Um, it's, it's concealable. It's closed. When it's closed, it's very safe. Um, but like I said, you can use it as a flail and hit somebody, and it will do some damage even without cutting.